Hey everyone, welcome back to Pretending with Dice. As always, I'm your host and game master, AJ. Uh, pretty much just a quick recap intro for you all this time around. Uh, but first, I would just like to say a big, big thanks uh, to everyone who left us kind words about the last episode on our social media accounts and whatnot. As you all know, this uh, current storyline is with a brand new group of players and characters, and it was just really great to see them all get welcomed so warmly by all of you. So uh, thanks so much. All right, uh, let's recap what happened last time. Uh, We began our tale at the end of summer uh, by meeting each of our three new adventurers uh, separately. Uh, Firstly, we were introduced to Fane, an elven cleric of the Raven Queen, who was travelling in the company of a small group of other clerics uh, to the village of Alfred Mill, where they were to take part in the village's annual Harvest's End Festival. Uh, Fane didn't know much about the area, or indeed about what would be expected of him at the festival, uh, but we'll get back to that. Uh, Next, uh, we met Celeste, uh, a Janassi, who had been staying in the barn of a farm a couple of miles outside of Alfred Mill. Uh, We were also introduced to her posse of goats. (laughs) Um, She had a brief discussion with her host, uh, the farmer Oscar, uh, who informed her that he and his son would be delivering a cart of supplies to the dwarves of the nearby mine of Alehand's Folly uh, before heading into the village for the festival. Uh, Celeste said that she might meet him there, and after breakfast took a horse and set off towards the festival site. Finally, uh, we met Erebus, a confident Aracocra with uh, little patience for the social norms of the people who live their lives on the ground. Uh, After briefly helping some of the festival entertainers to set up their large tent, uh, Erebus went for a quick swim in the (laughs) river next to the festival ground, uh, giving some rides to nearby uh, village children while there. Uh, At this point, the people of the village began to gather for the Harvest End Festival uh, opening, and as his cart arrived, Fane was brought up on stage, finding himself in the unexpected position of having to give a short speech of blessing from his god. Uh, While he managed to stumble through it, uh, the stress of the public speaking proved a little bit too much for him, and he was sick behind the stage. (laughs) That's pretty much where we left off last time, so without any further ado, uh, let's get into today's episode. Enjoy. So, uh, as the uh, crowds disperse among the various uh, stalls and attractions of the Harvest Zen Festival, uh, slightly awkwardly, as Fane is visibly being sick behind the stage, uh, what would any of you like to do? I'm going to fly up onto an apple box and just put my wings up really, like, above my head, like, majestically. Like sure. sphinx style. And just be style. like, good harvest to you people, good harvest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, sure, but you get a cut, you get some... Some looks from people, and including their small child, like, and from it's sort of still staring at you up and wondering in the dif- distance again. You hear like, "Praise be to the bird man." Um, and praise be to you, good sir. Praise <laughs> be to you. You still can't see who's <laughs> saying it, but you have heard it. It's the same voice from before. I'm listing my own crowd. Okay, yeah, you, you're setting up yourself as a, your own display. Basically, of. yeah, I'm like a moving statue, but only like I'll do like a wing at a time. Okay, are you putting out like a hat or something? Nope. <laughs> Nope, just doing it for just the short it. joy of okay, it. Okay, cool. Yeah, a few people sort of seem to be sort of gathering around as if you know they they know uh you know they they expect like a show to be starting and if I I I literally just look at them I'm like praise me <laughs> if they praise me if there's any kind of foliage I make it bloom. Okay, one or two they sort of look at each other and go, uh yeah sure yeah pra- praise to you bloom. Uh, so uh, yeah at your gesture uh, all of the the surrounding plants uh, burst into like sudden bloom and the the villager who gave you praise is uh, he's taken a little bit by surprise <laughs> oh awesome how'd you do that with your patronage oh bring others okay but what does that mean bring others to praise me no no the patron Hey, oh, hey. I just appreciate the praise. He, 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 this guy kind of turns over his shoulder. Jim, come here. This other guy sort of stumps ah, up. Ah, my good fellow Jim. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy kind of stumps up. Yeah, what do you want? And I just flamboyantly like sash- shimmy my wings and I'm like, praise me. Praise me, Jim. <laughs> Jim, Jim kind of looks at you and sort of 
sort of kind of looking you over and kind of looks at his mate who gives him gives him a nod. Go on, do it. Pray, praise him. It's really cool. He goes, uh, uh, pr- praise be, j- pr- praise you, bird, bird man. I thank you, Jim Bloom. Oh, oh wow, that's uh, that's different. Wish we'd had you round the farm the other month when we had trouble getting the potatoes started, I'll tell you that. I'm always here to help, Jim. A bit late always now, here but... to help. Yeah, well, good to, good to know. <laughs> Jim, bring friends. <laughs> now? Or... Anybody in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> this continues for some time. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Celeste, what would you like to be doing? Um... <laughs> By this point, I've created a flower, a field of flowers just around my store. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll like check out the tents on, like the just like around the edge, um, just sort of like peering in, seeing if anything okay. looks interesting in them. The, f- the first one you come across is it's a little bit of a wider one with kind of open sides. Um, it's decorated with quite kind of welcoming uh, bright blue and yellow ribbons and things. Mm-hmm. And there's a painted sign in front uh, that reads Storytime Village. <laughs> uh, <laughs> inside, you can see there's a it's kind of younger man. You'd put him maybe 16, 17 years old. He's reading from this big old book to a crowd of uh, small children who were all kind of sat cross-legged uh, listening to him. You can, you can hear he's kind of halfway through like a story already. It sounds a little bit spooky. You can hear sort of snatches of it. And then when the full moon rose, the evil werewolves came and snatched away their mummy and their daddy. And the children were left alone in the house, and they were all very afraid. <laughs> sort of, he's, very doing like, afraid. Vo- he's doing like voices and his eyes are getting big and everything. And he's, he's not a great storyteller, but everybody, you know, seems to, they seem to be having a good time anyway. The children are kind of looking at him quite sort of rapt attention like... <sighs> And they're, they're kind of gasping in all the right places, so he's sort of, uh, yeah. I'll go in and, and sit on the edge and listen to, to what he has to say. Because, you know, it might be true. He could be reading, like, it. it's fact, it's not a story. It could be, yeah, yeah. Could be scripture. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you sort of sit down, he kind of looks and he's, you know, he's used to everybody else there as sort of children. You, you just kind of, you kind of leaning up against a, a pillar or something. Uh, or actually sitting down with the children. <laughs> Sitting like with my back to the the tent wall, or okay. like, with my yeah, back yeah. to something, so no one, nothing can combine yeah. me. Or he sort of clocks you. He sort of pauses a second and just carries on. So, but there was one among the children who was braver than his brothers or sisters, um, braver but foolish, and he went outside looking for the mother and the father, and what did he find? He kind of looks around at the children and kind of leans forward. The leader of the werewolves. <gasps> To Celeste to do that and yes. yeah, he that kind was of, in character yeah, he, 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 he sort of he, he kind of like oh good a, a proper reaction to this story <laughs> and, sort of like, and the, the leader of the werewolves took the brave but foolish boy and made him one of them <gasps> what and they never saw him again ever ever uh, uh, no uh, uh, but forever after on a full moon <gasps> A wolf with hair the very same colour as the boys could be seen on the edge of the dark forest outside of the town, looking hungrily at the little boys and girls who lived within. I did not see that coming. (laughs) And what is the moral of this story, children? Well, I don't know. You tell me. Uh, um... Don't go out when there's werewolves about. It, it's not a classical tale, I'll give you that. It's, <laughs> it's... <laughs> what? He uh, he kind of uh, flips back through the book and says, uh, 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 Okay, uh, w- what sort of story would you like to hear next then, children? One of the children sort of pipes up and says, Tell the werewolf story again. <laughs> he says, uh, Oh, Oh, well, I don't know. It, it was quite long. Uh, how about something a little less scary? Uh, another child kind of calls out, I want something even scarier. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, okay. Um, he sort of frantically flips through the pages, sort of looking for something suitable there. <laughs> he, he's looking a bit kind of, um, a bit stressed out, you know, kind of a little bit <laughs> like he's been put on the spot. Uh, uh, okay, um, well, maybe this one. Um, 
one dark evening, tinkly winkly and Gregothy were walking by the the graveyard late at night when they heard an awful moaning sound. And it sounded just like this. And he sort of puts cups his hands and he goes, Ooh. <gasps> oh. And they looked, and the king of the skeletons was sitting on top of one of the gravestones. A friend. Uh, he really pauses at this. <laughs> 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 No, not a friend. A friend! And she starts like clapping. A couple of like, children go, a friend! A, a friend! friend. <laughs> a friend. <laughs> you just create a whole generation of necromancers. Yes. <laughs> and, and the king of the, the skeleton said, uh, Join me in my underground kingdom. <gasps> Yay! And you shall live forever. And Tinkly Winkly said, No, I've heard about you and your lies, King of the Skeletons. Oh. <laughs> and it refused to go with him, but Gre- Gre- Gregomathy <laughs> was, <laughs> his, was tempted by the King of the Skeletons. Yes, Gregomathy! <laughs> <laughs> you go, Gregomathy! The guy is really pausing, he doesn't quite know. This isn't going the way he planned at all. <laughs> Um, so, but Gregomathy s- stepped inside the uh, the graveyard, and one of the children goes, "Oh no!" And it, he kind of looks at that child. He's like, "Right, yeah, yes, yes, that's right. He shouldn't have gone inside the graveyard. Why? But he would lose his soul forever. No, with the. But that's what it says in says in the book. But friendship. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, Miss, would you like to tell the stories? No, I like listening. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> so, the, the further into the um, graveyard Gregomathy went, the more like a skeleton he looked. <gasps> and t- Tinkly Winkly was, <laughs> was, <laughs> was sad. For before long, he looked and he could not tell the difference between... Gregomathy and the king of the skeletons. He became a friend. <laughs> he was his own king. No! I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if that was the, the moral. It, oh, there's a page missing. Oh. <laughs> well. The moral of the story is be friends with your local skeletons. <laughs> uh, 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 okay. Um, well, children, I'll be back in a little while. I'm going to go get a glass of water and lie down for a minute. <laughs> Um, and uh, he sort of uh, he looks a little bit sort of shell shocked, and he kind of closes his book and sort of gets <laughs> up and wanders off. And here, when the children go, oh, I want to meet the skeleton king, and one of his friends goes, I want to meet Gregomathy. Gregomathy, he's one of them now. And you know what we can do because she's got like she's made like um, jewelry and necklaces out mm. of sort of like animal bones and everything. Like. Yeah. Um. So she's like, yeah. Um, animal bones and she's like well children there's a there's a dance that we can do to to summon <laughs> to summon the friends i like dancing my mummy says i'm the best dancer mm, i'm sure she does child <laughs> <laughs> there's a boy he's a, he's a couple of years older than the others he's like i don't want to do any dancing why do you not want more friends well yeah, I want, I want more friends. So do the dance. <laughs> Make an intimidation check for me. <laughs> Is it really D&D if you don't threaten a child? <laughs> I guess not. Oh no, that's a seven. <laughs> seven? Yep. <laughs> he he kind of stares you down a little bit and goes, No, I don't want to dance. I'm going to go get an apple. Or go and get apple. We could use apple for the ritual, uh, the dance. <laughs> <laughs> You've kind of taken over this tent at this point. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, Just as a disclaimer, I don't actually want to do like I don't want to do any necromancy or anything. <laughs> like I don't want to raise skeletons. This is fair enough. But so the children just kind of like some of them are quite small, and they're just doing like small child dancing, you know, where they're just kind of sort of throwing themselves a about boogie. a bit. Um, right this boy sort of wandered off, and you see him sort of like going and finding an apple somewhere, <laughs> um, but he doesn't look like he's coming back. 
Um, That's okay. But the children I have are enough kind followers. of dancing. They don't. It do, it doesn't strike you as the kind of precise sort of dance you would need for some kind of ritual. So you're probably okay if you don't actually. She's want just to. there doing like throwing her arms up, yeah. like doing some sort of like throwing some shapes. Basically, yeah, like going round in a circle, like spinning, like basically a rave. Uh, more like a, a medieval rave, like you know, fancy <laughs> vibe. Like she jingles a little bit when she dances. Okay, like so a that, little bit of like a hippie round a campfire kind yeah, of thing. Okay, um, I mean there is music playing in the background, so you kind of manage yeah. to get the rhythm a little bit and just sort yeah. of like he drops like a cello, and that's a literal bass drop. <laughs> But yeah, there's like a kind of folk band who are sort of playing tunes and that, and you sort of manage to get the children in that, and they're sort of chanting like, Skeleton King, Gregor Gamathy, Skeleton King, Gregor Gamathy. <laughs> Just clapping along, yeah, like, yeah. really happy with us. They're, they're really into it. Yeah. Um, some of the parents return at this point, and they, they kind of look around a little bit kind of aghast at what's going on, but their children <laughs> are, do seem to be having fun. Ask for payment. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Fane, what would you like to do? <laughs> uh, he wipes the last bit of um, I you chunder up. from yeah. his uh, <laughs> uh, from his uh, from his mouth, um, and kind of comes out from the stage area to see a giant bird posing, posing, <laughs> and he's just like, okay, and walks like right up to like the, the encircled group. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, you 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 see uh, Erebus there, demanding praise, um, but making flowers. Um, I'm a simple bird. <laughs> are there any particular like, I don't know, pretty flowers that he sees near him? Yeah, so yes, yeah, there's, there's a good display going on here. Uh, he just kind of like crouches down and picks up the most like colourful one and just kind of like starts staring at it for a bit, just kind of like very intrigued. Okay. Just think like, oh, this is quite cool. You, sir, you look like you could praise me. Oh, sorry? Sorry what? Ah, a simpleton. Ah, you puny <laughs> payment. <laughs> you poor, poor soul. <laughs> he takes a moment kind of looking at you, like, can't tell if he if he's offended or not. But I know the, the flowers just look kind of, kind of cool, just... They are payment for praise. For picking my flower, you owe me praise. Praise me. Uh, and he kind of like tucks the flower into his like robes and just kind of like looks at his empty coin purse. I don't ask for money. I ask for verbal praise. Simple bird. Simple means. Praise. Why not? I'm technically not. I'm technically still praising a bird of some sort. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was thinking. Raven Queen, hell of a bird. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I was going with, yeah, but I can see my brain exactly, is I've been spending too much exactly time around truck drivers. <laughs> <laughs> sure, praise this specific bird person. Thank you, sir. And I want to make the flower in his pocket bloom further somehow and just. I think you can do that. Yeah. Sure. Further Ooh, can bloom. it like take root in my robe? Sure. Is there a decent amount of It's a very dirty your... robe. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of the two. It's, Do you have like a pocket full of like like peat or like loam or something? I'm going to check his equipment because I'm pretty sure. Just a pocket of dirt. I mean, that's absolutely very on brand for me. Yeah. Can I have a pocket of moss? Sure. Yeah, Thank yeah. yeah. You. Okay. Praise me. Uh, I will give you moss. <laughs> more he, moss. Only, he owns armor and a single set of clothing. So yes, this is the only set of clothes that he owns. So technically, yes, this there, it would be a sufficient amount of dirt. On the outside, dirt. there's a fair amount of dirt on there. You're able to, the flower is able to bloom a bit more. <laughs> he kind of looks down, and just okay. I'm glad I made you happy, simpleton. And I go back to posing. <laughs> <laughs> what does that word mean? And he stands there, like, what does that word mean? In the distance, you can hear. Gregor Murphy, Skeleton King. <laughs> <laughs> My keen elf hearing. Yeah, your keen elf hearing. His talk of a skeleton king. and He, like, immediately, like, kind of snaps out of it. He's just kind of, like, looking about very wildly there. Yeah. Because there's one thing that he kind of knows is bad. <laughs> yeah, it's skeleton it's kings. It's skeleton kings. Yeah. He read a story once about a young lad named Gregor Murphy, because that's all he knows how to read. Yeah. He doesn't read very well. So he kind of knows some storybook things. Oh yeah, the moral was never going to graveyards at night. Yeah, so he knows not to go into graveyards at night. That's like 
lest you become green. one of the undead. Yes, and he immediately like kind of like rests his hand on the hilt of a, his dagger, like looking around very. <laughs> like, I need to stab these children. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to follow the sounds, or are you? Uh... Um, how competent does the bird person look in terms of like? Actually, I think how competent does Erebus look um, in terms of like? As a as a fighter, I am majestic, <laughs> and I look so competent that I'm the most competent looking one here. Uh, Erebus looks confident, and confidence <laughs> is key. That's yeah. true. I feel very <laughs> inspired by you. He's basically um, a bard in his own way. I, I very <laughs> deftly step between the flowers so that I don't step on them because they're very pretty. Yeah, you don't want to have to. You know, get charged for more praise. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he kind of like stands close to you and just kind of goes, There's talk of a skeleton king around here. I don't think I can. Is he take receiving him praise? It's out there like chanting. It's. That is my praise. Which direction? <laughs> and I, I point. <laughs> yeah. I just take off at a absolute running flying speed. I just, follow I as well. Bolt that way. All right. Okay. Strapping the I think I've got like arm. 50 foot speed in flying so I just take off at that speed Celeste you're kind of I'm dancing in and surrounded by children <laughs> and uh, a, uh, a large arachocra I'm going to like full on barrel through those wings through the tent and um, I'm just going to fly up extend out my wings and like uh, inside yep yeah yep I'm going to be hitting the tent walls hopefully yeah. at this point I mean, it's more of a gazebo that's fine I will be creating a gust in here <laughs> okay Sh- sure um is Gust a cantrip, or are you, are you, are you just doing it manually? Just, uh, I think I, I Gust mean, is a cantrip, but... It, it is one that I have, but I'm not doing it in that way. I'm You're not, just flapping your wings. Yeah, I'm just... I'm just yeah. yeah. Okay, you knock over some small children and see a uh, see Celeste. I am your skeleton king. <laughs> I require your praise, small puny ones. <laughs> Fully claiming the praise. <laughs> 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 One of the small children you've knocked over is just to hear it begin to cry on the ground. Tears are a form of praise. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> a few seconds later, a gothy elf yeah, just kind of bur- bursts in, bursts shield, in. Yeah. shield on. He's like holding his holy symbol that's actually like glowing like a bit. <laughs> you are slow, Simpleton. You are slow. <laughs> you just, I, I didn't know you could fly. The wings were a giveaway. Uh. He kind of like stops me and like actually like rests on his oh, knees. God. I am out of shape. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, my legs sore. Can't walking. Uh, I would invest in some uh, wings if I were you. Uh, I just threw up a little bit earlier. That was me behind the behind the. I was the one who was sitting on the stage. You are of weak constitution. Why is there a kind child here? He praises me. <laughs> oh, I see a skeleton king around here. No, you see Celeste surrounded by dancing slash crying children. I feel like I've... Oh, did I... This, uh... Uh, and I kind of, like, move closer to where Erebus is, and I'm, like... I'm in the air, just bear in mind. I'm just, like, right below you, kind of, like, kind of, like, kind of blowing my hair back. I don't think there's a skeleton king here. I think it Puny was just simpleton, children. I am the skeleton king. What does that word mean? I turn to you because you're the only adult near me. What does that word mean? You ruin my friendship circle. <laughs> I I ascend. I just I don't really I don't know how I move, but I'm just like drifting towards her. Well, as in like repositioning yourself to be on yeah. her side of the argument. Yeah, here. I'm just like okay. moving across the tent to be behind her. Okay, there's a little bit of tension in the air here. <laughs> Puny simpleton, why do you upset my minions? <laughs> I'm very confused right now. Can I levitate, please? Sure. Is um, that a spell? Um, it is. It's a second level spell. I do. <laughs> you want to burn your second level spell on levitate? That is fine. I don't think you need to roll to levitate. Um, Wicked. <laughs> but yes. Yeah, so you, you, you raise off the ground. Um, the uh, crying child stops crying and is just staring at you kind of wide-eyed. In the, in the distance you can hear, Praise be the bird man and the hovering lady. We appreciate you, humble simpletons. I'm going to unbuckle my shield and like kind of like sling it over my shoulder because I buckled it up thinking okay. there was a skeleton around. I'm just And I'm just like looking up towards the two of you and I'm just like, 
I think we may have got off on the wrong foot here. Hmm. I don't know how... Uh, I don't really do this talking that much. Um, sorry, 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 everyone. Um, I only kind of look down sheepishly. At this point, the 17-year-old guy comes back in. He's sort of looking at us. Who wants to hear about a woman who lives in a boot? Wait, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> you, sir, what is your name? Digby. Digby, we appreciate your patronage towards the Skeleton King. Praise us. Oh, no, not still the Skeleton King. Yeah, the ske- Yeah, apparently it's still it, it's a thing. Friendship! <laughs> The Skeleton King is a sigil for friendship. I'm just trying to tell stories for the children. They like the Skeleton King. Well, they didn't use to. Digby, we are requesting more stories of my amazing demeanour. Well, one time there was a a scary bird man and a scary More convincing, Digby. And and this guy, and they they left my tent. I angry... I angry just goes ah, in this direction. I'm ah, the followers. Ah, ah, I get hit by one. <laughs> I, I direct, I literally like direct it at him. Okay, um, I guess I'll roll to see if he gets knocked over <laughs> by it. Uh, I, yeah, make a strength check, I guess. See how. Actually, I'm gonna gust cantrip at him. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your spell save? It is 14. 14. Well, I rolled an eight, and he is a regular human boy. Um, well, he should have been more so convincing. <laughs> this is an eight, and uh, he falls over into the side of the tent and is, drops his book on his like he's he, he's fully blown back and ends up with his book on his face. Can I sleight of hand? Oh no, he drops it on his face. Never mind. Well, he kind of drops it. I, I, can, well, I, I can attempt to sleight of hand pick up the book. Sure. I'm wondering what your thought process is here. Because I'm, sh- I'm a street thief and I like things. Okay. I have this weird compelling need to pick up things that seem to have some emotional attachment to people. I don't particularly want to, I just do. This is just a klepto sort of yeah. <laughs> klepto well, like, priest. People seem to like it, including these two strange people. Like, something special must be about it. And for some reason, there's just a need to, br- to collect it. It's a storytelling tent. Yep. But, <laughs> but sure. Okay, make a sleight of hand check. I'm expecting this to go bad. I don't particularly want to do this as a player, to be honest. I don't know what it is with me and eights, but 14? 14? Uh, <laughs> okay, I guess I'll just I'll, I'll make a quick uh, perception check for him. Uh, I got a six. So yeah, you managed to just quickly pocket this book. And um, he doesn't know where it is. And congrats, you've shut down one of the tents. In this festival by taking away the storytellers. I kind of take it. I'm just like, oh. No, you can keep it if you want. I'm not. I'm not trying to guilt trip you. I'm just saying that's. What's no, happening. no. As a character, like he just did it, and it was kind of like, oh, he gets very sh- sheepish. <laughs> there's a there's an awkward silence as the small children are kind of looking for their parents as they're suddenly been knocked out of this dancing and that. In the background, the music's still playing, but the combination of. Are there any kids that don't look intimidated by us? There's maybe one or two. I put them on my back and slowly fly around the tent. Sure, it's yeah, okay. Yeah, it's not a big tent, but I mean, it's yeah. more like just you're kind of just sort of hovering around in a circle. Yep. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, 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 that that happens. Praise me, kids. Yeah. Yay! But, I mean, they praise you by saying yay. If there's anything floral, I doubt there is. But I mean, there's grass on the ground. You can maybe it gets greener. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right, so does, does I am miracle the, um, grow. You three have does, all awkwardly met each other now. So. Does, does Digby like leave the the tent? He looks quite upset, and he does sort of. He looks around for his book and goes, "Oh." I can regale you with stories of my my majesty. Instead, Digby, you should learn to improve your storytelling. But I just read them from the book. That is not enough, Digby. I take the book out, hand back to him. I'm like, I don't know why I did that. I'm very sorry. Just, I don't he just sort of takes it. And goes, I don't, I don't like stealing from sad people. I'm sorry. I steal from normal people, just fine. But why, why would you do this to me? I just, I, I'm sorry, man. I thought you were a priest. He is but a simple. He term. has a look of like, <laughs> oh shit, I'm a priest. Like you can say, like, <laughs> but he's like, he, he looks almost on the verge of tears. Like, can I just stop? Boo. <laughs> and then get all the children. Go, Boo. 
<laughs> yeah, no, like with very little effort. The children are very easily led here. Mm. Yeah. See, kids, this is what you don't want to be when you grow up. You want to make friends. We make friends. <laughs> this is a friendship circle when I turn my back on. I fame. go outside and cry. <laughs> like, actually, like, lay on the floor. And, like, no, lay on the floor. <laughs> That's probably a bit much. Just go feet all the <laughs> Curl up. Having a tantrum, like, from, like yeah. smashing Curl up in a crouch and just silently yeah. cry. <laughs> yeah. You, well, yeah. You just... I think between, the, th- between the three of you, you've made this man have a very bad day. <laughs> on a verge of a mental break. Yeah, he's not, he doesn't look happy. Yeah. So, um, so the, the two of you, let's say, like, Digby looks pretty dejected, and he just sort of says, oh... I need to go. I'll, I'll be back later, children. That would be best, Digby. That would be best. But why are you here? <laughs> I was summoned by your story. Uh, but, uh, I would think about this. Review this. Come back in some time. I just ascend, like, I was, I was like, hovering yeah. down, and I just go back up oh, yeah. to the centre I mean, of the tent. Celeste, you're still levitating, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he walks out and you can tell he's just like he's on the verge of tears he's just look what you've leaves. done I'm already outside sil- he's I'm, outside I'm outside, already si- crying I'm outside silently crying <laughs> can I see like your shape outside and just or just make a I'll make a comment yeah, to I mean, where you yeah there's open left. sides on like one end of the tent so you can yeah I just really want to rub it in his face that oh, I'm no. annoyed at him for him destroying my friendship yeah you can totally do that mm. don't worry he's severely damaged by this mm-hmm, good <laughs> already he might never recover from this probably not take he's had a pretty tw- shit life to be honest take 12 points of psychic damage oh, no, no. <laughs> no, no, don't really. I'm, not re- I'm not resistant to emotional damage <laughs> yeah. so that's the storyteller's tent where would you like to go next <laughs> <laughs> who's next um... there is a uh, there's a fortune teller's tent which uh, Erebus you noticed uh, the three of you now sticking together or are you um... I'll stick with Erebus yeah but you, the other you, one could just you don't follow like him. along. You don't no, like fame. I, I do eventually come back in and then approach you guys. Like, I just kind of look at him in a very awkward bird way that I'm just kind of like affronted by the fact that he's just returning to my presence hmm. without praise. Uh, Fane just kind of like very kind of cautiously approaches, like kind of like holding himself in a very <laughs> awkward way. This guy goes, uh, I'm sorry about literally everything I don't I don't do people uh but you guys are clearly much more powerful than I am at what point do I strike you as human puny human I mean it was more people you seem like people and I'm also not human but okay do Uh, I look like people to you no you look like a bird thank you like a giant majestic bird (laughs) (laughs) You throw in majestic, that's something. He's not as simpleton as uh, I thought. Uh, I think he's still a simpleton. He notices my majesty. <laughs> I mean, you're the first kind of... You're the first bird person I am. Do you mind if I ask what you are? All you know, and all you need to know, is that I deserve praise. And I do a head flick of the most, like... Yeah, that's... <laughs> it's poignant as hell. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a beam, like a, a small beam of light just comes through the top of the tent, hits mm. my no, feathers. No, it does that. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that totally slight happens. Glimmer. This is a pretty shoddy tent. There's a little yeah. bit of a hole in the and the cloud goes across. Beam of sunlight comes down at the exact moment. You get the ding on your beak again. Yeah. As I just turn back, it's like kind of like a ballet pil- pirouette when they have that spot and they like turn and their heads like dead center and they're like. Me. Mm. You've got this move down. This yeah. is yeah, like <laughs> you your signature move. It. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. this is well rehearsed. Yeah. I spent some time in a cave mm. in a sea. Um, <laughs> it's, plenty, it's the perfect place to practice your posing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fair. Nice shiny surfaces there. <laughs> I preen. <laughs> uh, so yes, um, there's a few places you can go if you want to go anywhere. There's the fortune teller. There's the face painting. There is a cider drinking contest. Uh, there is a pie eating contest. Uh, there is the circus tent. There is a cheese wheel roll, but it's quite kind of flat <laughs> ground, so it doesn't look like that anybody's really having any fun. Oh, I could accelerate the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's just a the, very odd sentence. That's the like best it. line ever <laughs> spoken in any D and D game. <laughs> I can accelerate the cheese. <laughs> 
if you want to go to the cheese thing, that is 100% up to How you. How would you feel about a game? I like games. The children can join if they'd like. As long as it's not him, it's fine. He can watch. He can prove himself. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of the children have gone off to find their parents at this point as well. I just make my way out of the tent in a very, like... Is there a hole in the top of the tent? There's a little one, yeah. The light came down through it. But it's not big enough for you to get through. Can I try and get through the oh hole in the tent? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I, make I'm, a strength check? I cast Guidance on Erebus. Oh. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so I'm just like, do it. I want to, like... L- like kind of slowly go as I'm making my way forward like go down to as I reach the edge of the tent like that's when I touch the ground yeah and then just like I'm, I'm out I'm not yeah you're just this walking. is not gonna go well it's definitely not I'm not about this life so that is a total of six <laughs> okay <laughs> it so was a t- it was was that with guidance yes that's with guidance I helped <laughs> <laughs> okay um yeah the end of your beak through the hole and I slash it around in a majestic <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> Even with the slashing, you manage to just about poke your head through, and then you're kind of stuck. I very much roll with it. <laughs> 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 I intended this the whole time. Yeah. You get a good view of the outside from where you are. How stuck am I? I mean, you could you could back up. It's not comfortable, though. <laughs> I'll reverse out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, so you leave the tent the, the regular way, then, I guess. Um, this now deserted tent stays deserted. Um, it looks like Digby has wandered off somewhere. Uh, Fane is outside watching... Well, you cast Guidance, so I guess... It's sort I've, of just gone, in, I've gone inside this. To, to be like, yeah, go for it. <laughs> the most... <laughs> the best cheerleading ever yeah go for it yeah go for it yeah. guidance <laughs> um, and Celeste is outside as well now so. are you still That's... levitating Mm-mm. no I you I've can't I don't floor. think you can move while levitating you're just like up there I think well you're down now anyway you said you were down can right. I try and pick her up with my talents that's up to the two of you no, really. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go check out the fortune telling tent I can tell it I can transport you there it's I mean it's like right next door yeah to it's it. like 30 feet away Maybe, maybe later. You, you are casting poor fortune upon yourself from not wishing to bathe in my presence. I do wish to bathe in your presence. <laughs> Shower me with that birdie goodness. <laughs> Less salt. I evolve the coast. <laughs> then you should be used to it. And with that, I turn on my heel and go to the fortune telling tent. And you walk away. Yeah. Okay. So I just gust at her. I just kind of look between the two of them and be like, right, they both kind of insulted me. I don't know which one (laughs) hates me less. I'm going to, like, speed barrel towards the cheese. I'm slightly Sure, okay. (laughs) Let's go... Okay, so you guys are splitting up. I'm slightly intrigued by the fortune teller, so I'll follow, but at a respectful distance. So the the fortune telling tent is kind of on the edge of the the kind of campground. It's not like out in the woods, but it's sort of very much kind of not front and center. The tent is uh, of a quite sort of thick, dark red material. Uh, it's you can't see what's going on inside at all. Like the, some of the other tents and things, there's kind of open sides to them and, and things. This one is sort of pretty much just closed. Uh, there's a sign outside that says, um, "Madam Astra, Mistress of the Web of Fate." Futures told, fortunes read, one entry per person. And uh, yes, there's actually two um, burning kind of uh, sort of stakes. No, no. I tried those tiki torches things. Mm-hmm. They've yeah. got the alt right connotation now after that thing a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. So there's a couple of candles tiki outside. Tiki torches, but not racist. Yeah, yeah non racist <laughs> tiki torches burning yeah. outside. Um, and uh, yes, that's, that's, that's what faces you as you approach the tent uh is there any like um anything outside to say there's someone in there or is it just i mean it doesn't say closed or anything but like no but like someone having their fortune read no sign any... as you uh, at the moment you can't see anything but there's yeah it does it doesn't look like anyone's i'll go in okay so 
As you step inside, the first thing that hits you is a quite heavy smell of uh, incense. The air's a little bit kind of smoky, uh, but not in like a, an oppressive way. It's more just in that way that sort of kind of enhances the whole sort of atmosphere of the thing. Uh, you would expect there to be sort of a lot in the way of kind of ornamentation and sort of mystical accoutrements with this kind of tent. Uh, but you're actually a little surprised at how Spartan it is in here. Uh, as suspected, uh, there is the uh, a small kind of incense burner off to one side. But other than that, there are just a pair of large cushions, one of which is empty, and the other of which is currently occupied by an older human woman. Uh, you put her maybe ooh, early 60s. Uh, she sat uh, cross-legged uh, facing you, and uh, between the cushions is placed a small tea set. Uh, as you walk in, uh, the woman looks up at you, and you can see straight away that she appears uh, to be blind. Uh, both of her eyes are completely kind of uh, whited out by uh, cataracts. This doesn't seem to stop her from making eye contact with you, however. She says, Welcome, child. Hello, friend. She gestures to the cushion in front of you. Please take a seat. I'll sit down, yeah. What brings you to Madame Astra today? I, d I just want to know what the future holds. She sort of, um, she holds out her hand for, for yours. And, um, are you, are you, what, do you give her your hand or are you, what, what are you thinking? If we could go the less touchy side of it, that would be great. Okay. Um, she doesn't seem put out by this at all. Uh, she just gives a sort of slight nod. As you wish. And closes her eyes, uh, taking a, a long, deep breath. Opening them again after a moment. Uh, you'd swear there's kind of like a slight light sort of shining from behind her eyes as she begins to speak. Your future is in motion. You cloak yourself in a shroud of suspicion, but where you place it may not always be where you should. You will find yourself in a place out of time, but the danger it poses to the present is very real. I would not recommend trying the sushi. <laughs> and then her eyes kind of close and she shakes her head and says, Oh, that, uh, does that mean anything to you, child? It does. It's very insightful, thank you. The fish is not always good. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, she, uh, she leans forward and uh, pours some tea into one of the cups in front of her. Would you like some, dear? I would love some. She uh, hands you the cup that she just poured and then pours herself another one. Mm -hmm. uh, the pair of you just kind of uh, sort of sit there in silence for a few, a few seconds, kind of drinking. Um, but it's not really an awkward silence. Uh, uh, as you both finish, she uh, puts her cup down. Well, I believe there's a young elf waiting outside, isn't there, dear? Best not to keep him waiting. Oh, I suppose. It was nice meeting you. You too, dear. Beware of the eight. Beware of the eight. Ominous, I like it. <laughs> she gives you a wink as you, <laughs> <laughs> as you, uh, as you step outside and uh, as the curtain flap closes behind you, you can see uh, Vane sort of still standing there. He hands you a small daisy chain that he made while he was sitting outside. I want to place it on my head. Like, in acceptance, but also you're not off the hook yet. Yeah. How, how'd it go? Find out for yourself. Okay. She's waiting for you. Am I allowed to ask about stuff about me? I don't want to ask about stuff about... I should... It's okay. And I walk in. Okay. You're greeted. Putting that 11 charisma to good use. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there is an older human woman inside. Um, already looking at the door as you come in. Um, she appears blind. But she's looking right at you. As in making eye contact as you come in. Gestures to the cushion in front of her. Please take a seat, dear. He uh, kind of very gingerly sits down, but very much like 
keeping his eye on the peripherals, mm. like just kind of naturally just observant. Okay. What can I do for you today, dear? Um, first of all, is this, do I have to pay? I don't have, uh... Do not worry. Okay. That was my first, that was, wait, do I get more questions or was that the only one? I will allow another question. Okay, good, thank you. (laughs) I... Am I where I'm supposed to be? Closes her eyes for a second before opening them and as with Celeste, I mean, you didn't see it, but seems to be a slight kind of light in the, she says I sense a purpose in your fate but the hand that guides it is not your own you will be where you are meant to be I cannot recommend trying the sushi don't try the what? (laughs) (laughs) ah merely a fish dish being currently sold by a gnomish chef three tenths over his personal hygiene let's just say it leaves much to be desired oh okay, okay. just a, just a bit i of- mean i've eaten out of little trash before so i th- i should i should be okay does it still taste nice though she just kind of seems to regard you for a second before saying some of your fate is in your own hands <laughs> <laughs> okay okay thank you and i thought I'm- not really knowing how to exit a conversation, just get up and leave. Okay. Just combat roll out of the tent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. You uh, you leave the tent behind. Okay. I just step out. Is Celeste still out? Still out there, or is she? I've gone off to the Did cheese wait? tent. Yeah. I'm gonna follow where I just okay. went. So it, the cheese isn't really in a tent. There's kind of like a sort of the cheese. It's stand. pretty much like <laughs> it's pretty much, made of cheese. It's pretty much like less of like a stand and more of like a, a short kind of race course. Uh, there's a, a couple of lanes that have been marked out across like a, a section of the field uh, by ribbons. Uh, at one end of each of the lanes sits like a pretty large wheel of cheese, like at least a foot in radius. And uh, at that end is where the sort of tent is set up. There's a big banner that says Harvest End Cheese Wheel Roll in kind of big block lettering. Uh, and there seems to be quite a crowd around it. What would you like to do, Erebus? <laughs> Who among you puny humans wishes to pay for my entrance into the most majestic and prestigious of races? I will bring much entertainment to all. Make a persuasion check, just in general. (laughs) Ten. Ten. Okay. (laughs) One guy sort of clearly has had a couple. Yeah, there you go. Chucks five copper to the guy running the store. I want to see the bird person push a cheese wheel. Thank you, good sir. Praise be to the bird person. A bloom. (laughs) Thank you very much. So you're up against, in your cheese wheel race, a uh, quite heftily built dwarf who's um, got a giant mug of cider in one hand, a beard that's soaked. You get the feeling this guy's been drinking a while, but like a kind of steely glint of determination in his eyes. He kind of looks and he goes... You reckon you can push a cheese wheel faster than Hornbird the cheese wheeler? Mm. Ha! He takes a long swig of his cider. <laughs> I just look at him with a just pure disdain in my face as I puff up my chest and I'm just... I just don't say anything. Uh, I just, I'm not impressed. I do not need praise from the likes of you. <laughs> what do you mean the likes of me? You are beyond puny. Is that a <laughs> is that a pop about my height? It is a general comment. <laughs> he uh, he downs the rest of his drink and he's sort of waving his finger at you. He's a little bit kind of slurry and he's like, "I'll have you know, Birdman, I've been rolling cheese since before you was even an egg." You need to work on your decorum, sir. It is offensive to the puny children. I don't see any children around here, and he's looking. There's like six children, like right there. That's because you are of their height. You would think they be your elders. Elders? They ain't got half a beard among them. Well, except for that one. Points at another dwarf who's quite clearly got a giant beard. I do not need to exchange with you. 
the, the person running the store go, right, you ready? <laughs> you set up in your lane. Yeah, this, this is. <laughs> all right. Okay, uh, cheese wheelers. Uh, right. Okay, cheese wheelers. Stand ready in your lanes, please. Uh, I'm going to cast Enhance Ability on myself. Okay. Old Strength. Okay. So, the guy uh, running it starts counting down. Okay. Three, two, one. Can I get a Strength check from you? I will be also doing one for the Dwarf. That's a ten total. That's with advantage. That's a ten total. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, well, uh, I got a 24. So... Your confidence is high going into this. As an Arakokra, you've got a lot of power behind you, but your sort of on-the-ground strength is maybe not quite as high, should Can we I say? I gust at my cheese. Yeah. Um, so you're having... You, you, get, you get it moving and rolling, you're doing okay, but the dwarf is, like, straight away. He's drunk as he is. He's just... He's kind of... The wheel of cheese is off and rolling. You can hear him so... Oh, get down the... <laughs> Uh, early bird person think they could beat me at a cheese whaling contest <laughs> and, I'm going to fly at the dwarf oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay uh, cheese wheel in hand nope I'm going to fly to pick him up <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, well this would be a grapple then I guess won't it okay so make another strength check you get advantage again So it's 14 14 I rolled a 15 total so <laughs> you come barreling towards the dwarf you're kind of uh, you're doing it with your hind legs I take it trying to pick him up of course um, you go to scrape and you kind of grab onto him but his momentum kind of pushing the cheese is too much for you and you just kind of he just kind of slips out of your grasp going, what the fuck do you think you're doing women to be wheeling cheese not flapping about you great feathery bastard uh, there's shouting from around it Disqualified! Disqualified from the cheese wheel race! You cannot be attacking the other cheese wheeler! I was going for the cheese. That's... that's not what this is about! I'm assisting a fellow cheese wheeler. No, no, disqualified, and you're not getting your copper back. You, sir, Hmm. do not deserve praise. (laughs) There's a a lot of grumbling in the crowd at this. People think you... well, you basically have gone for, like, a cheating move in this cheese wheel... cheese wheeling contest here. I am above your rules, puny humans. <laughs> sure you are. You're barred from any future cheese wheeling contests for three hours. And you are barred from praising me. Good. You say that now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So while all this is going on, um, Celeste, you suddenly hear a shout from the side of the uh, side of the the festival grounds. I just hear like it. Help. Help! Miss Celeste! Miss Celeste, help! God. Okay, I'll go over and see. Um, So, looking around, you can see kind of at speed, kind of wheeling out of the... like, through the village towards the festival ground is Oscar's cart. At the reins is his son, Jake. No sign of Oscar. And he looks pretty distraught. Mm -hmm. He sort of sees you. And sort of... He kind of pulls to a halt and jumps down goes, please help he runs round to the back of the cart and starts scrambling up onto it I like go round with him what is it child what is, uh, what is the matter so the, the first thing you see as you go around is um, in the back of the cart half of the supplies are still there that you saw them loading but on the car in a really bad shape bleeding from multiple wounds is a dwarf that you don't recognise still no sign of his father and this dwarf sort of like is getting real pale and just kind of is coughing (coughs) and blood sort of coming out the corner of his mouth you got got to help him these things they they were in the mine they managed to grab Gordrum here before one of them took dad you got we got to we got to do something stay here let me go and get help just, just stay. Oh, like okay, okay. Turn, because would I know that, like, if anyone would be able to help? Um, I think you'd know in general that you, you would have heard that, you know, clerics are, can do, like, healing magic and things. And, I mean, anybody, there, there might be one or two kind of people in town that have got sort of general kind of first aid knowledge and things. And 
yeah, the, the, you you would know there'd be people who could help. Yeah. Sort of thing. Um, I mean, considering I know where he is, I'll go and grab him. Go I'm wondering in the village square, like halfway through another daisy chain. I thought you came with. Did you not come with? No, the you went. Teacher? You went ahead when I went into the thing, didn't you? Okay. Um, so I'm just wondering about probably near where you are. Well, actually, would, yeah, no, would I'll I see? Run, would I see I'll Celeste run, like running, running off? And, I'll run back into like the main festival bit and like hmm. look around for the any cleric or any. Yeah, I mean, you, he's quite distinctive looking. Um, so, I mean, make a perception check for me. See how quickly you can find him. Especially if you're just kind of wandering, oh, yeah. kind of, you haven't ducked into any other tents or anything. No, I'm very distracted and okay. just like, I was like, okay, this kind of helped me make a fr- make a slight bit of a friend, I'm going to redo it there. <laughs> 19. 19. Yeah, you quite quickly can spot him to sort of uh, feign, just kind of wandering a little, little bit aimlessly. He's kind of fiddling with a, um, like a daisy chain, it looks like, in his hands, and he's sort of, he's not really looking where he's going. Um, oh, sorry. Kind of ambling aimlessly. Oh, sorry. You've got to come help. This is your chance to redeem yourself from earlier. Oh, uh, he puts the daisy chain. One of my friends out. has someone that is, he, he needs your help. Okay, yeah. Wait, where? This way. Go. Okay, run I run back. Run, yeah. follow with there. He kind of he kind of runs with a bit more purpose than he did before. There, where he's kind of moving idly now. He's now like kind of focused and moving in. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. You you quickly get back to the cart. There's this. There's a very distraught looking kind of younger teenage boy there, and uh, there is a dwarf of uh, indeterminate age. Looks like um, in quite a bad shape, sort of bleeding multiple places and that and sort of not unconscious but just sort of like real pale and on just the kind verge of, there yeah, yeah yeah okay um I kind of see this and kind of like very like kind of steely eyed and very like stoically he just kind of like put, moves his way past the um uh the kid kind of goes up to the dwarf and kind of goes okay what have we here and looks at him and goes uh don't worry, Sir Dwarf. We will keep you from your gods for just a while longer. And I'm going to cast a second level cure wounds on him. Sure. Okay. Roll. Uh, roll for healing. Twelve points of healing. Okay. So Celeste, you watch as um, Fane sort of leans over, and there's a slight glow around your holy symbol, and um, the dwarf's wounds begin to sort of knit themselves closed. He still looks in a pretty bad way, um, but uh, doesn't look like on the brink of death anymore. Sort of coughs and no blood comes out this time and that and just sort of looking around looks pretty sort of intensely and sort of almost as if he didn't really know where he was up until this point and sort of looking around fuck me I mean that's already part of the service unfortunately um, I do more the healing side of that but, uh, he just kind of looks at you like sorry I step the car <laughs> like a kind of <laughs> intense like fucking elves sort of look <laughs> He sort of gives you a look of like, thank you for the healing. What what happened to you? I don't know what they were, these things. Nestra and Hilda down on the new gallery, down in the mine, uncovered some kind of tunnel. Went looking into it. Never came back. A boss gathered everyone else go down after looking for them that's when these things came out of the tunnel started grabbing people stabbing them dragging them away like spiders but made of metal crystal I have no idea what those things are and they sound quite terrifying I mean we I think we're the only ones who can really help at the moment. We're close at hand. Where's the majestic bird? He was at the... He got into a bit of a kerfuffle with a dwarf and there was cheese involved. Um, Okay, that sounds... Never get between a dwarf and his cheese. (laughs) Yeah. That's the saying. Definitely got that vibe. Can we we go and get them? They... You and and them were quite quite powerful from what I could see. Yes, yeah. I need to I need to help. Um he's my friend. His dad's my friend. They've been good to me. I need to help. Jake kind of looks at you kinda of happy that you've you've said your help. So you you're going off to find 
Yeah, we'll Erebus. go find Erebus. Okay. It, easy to find because there's a lot of people kind of booing Erebus at the moment. <laughs> as you're standing around demanding praise for cheating oh, I've at stopped, I've stopped demanding praise now. I don't need their praise. <laughs> can I just be like starting to like patch up the patch up the dwarf yeah yeah you can be doing that i mean not with with more spells or with um just uh, just kind just of, general sort of i think i'm trained in medicine you can do a medicine check anyway i mean obviously training that helps doesn't it yeah, no but i do have a quite a good bonus i will attempt get, have a go yeah yeah just as kind of mm, it's a nine <laughs> nine yeah you <laughs> I mean, you're okay with the cleric healing. You're not particularly well versed in regular patching people up with bandages and stuff. You make an attempt, but it's not exactly, you know. Well, you look better. <laughs> you look amazing. You may, you wipe some of the blood off him and that, and you get the feeling, you know. So we'll just get that just there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, you haven't really done any more healing really with it. I I'm I'm not very good. At this. I'm That's all right, lad. You tried. This is when uh, Jake, the boy, because he goes, Dad and I, we were in there dropping off the supplies. One of these spider things went for Dad, and he just just collapsed. It grabbed him and ran off down into the ca- into the caves. Do you remember where it happened? Just just inside the entrance to the mine. Just in just in the uh, well. The dwarf goes, aye, up at uh, your hands folly is where we've been mining. The lad and his dad dropping us off stuff, and they turned up just at the wrong time, just as these things attacked. I'm going to, with the same kind of very direct, kind of like intense kind of stare, kind of take hold of Jake's shoulder. Was that his mm-hmm. name? Yeah. Jake's shoulder, and I just go, if he lives, we'll bring him back. Real uh, comforting. <laughs> It's but not no. my department. Yeah, fair, no, fair, fair, fair. Um, Jake's sort of like he—he looks a little kind of um, like not that he had. Yeah, I get like you get the feeling like he hadn't like not thought that his dad like he, he hadn't discounted the possibility that his dad was gone. But like just someone saying out loud that like, his dad might be gone, um, it's a bit shaking. But he kind of gives you like just to bring him back for me. Uh, we we will we will try. We will. We will. All right, so you find Erebus at this point? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm just creating, like, a... I'm just flying higher and higher up. <laughs> yeah, so as you fly high, you can see this... Um, you can see uh, Celeste and... Uh, I can just see them running across the field, around. basically. Yeah, yeah, looking at, the, at this cart. And uh, your keen um, Arakokra eyes spy the, uh, the wounded dwarf in the cart. I fly to the dwarf. Okay. So yeah, you uh, you touch down next to. Uh... Oh, I never touch the ground. Okay. No, no, no. no. You awkward... for mere mortals. <laughs> I was going to say these talents yeah. don't touch the ground. So. <laughs> God. There's mud on the ground. <laughs> no, yeah. No, so yeah, you hover next to the uh, <laughs> next to the others. Ah, puny immortal. You you seem in need of um, some not healing, but maybe some divine intervention. I being um, of the more angelic nature um, would appreciate your praise the dwarf just sort of looks at you oh, you can fuck off and all I've seen praise I need your help not your <sighs> he kind of looks around at Jake and Celeste cause you, and Bane because you guys actually seem to want to help him and not be asking for his praise and just sort of I'm sure that if we were to aid them uh, we would uh we would be able to you would de- most definitely praise our very mighty and powerful companion here I'm I'm, I'm, I'm sure <clears throat> and I'm kind of like giving him the sort of trying like, to give him like the kind of hint <laughs> if possible okay well yeah he's sort of uh, alright yeah I won't say no to help but yeah god I need a beer should we take the cart uh, it's up to you. How what do you want to do? I mean, it's it's basically. Oh, I actually wrote down the exact distances. Um, from the town to the mine is about twelve to fifteen miles. Yeah. We'll so it's see. not an instantaneous thing. It's going to take you a little little bit of time to travel there. Yeah, we'll take the car. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you could. I mean, it's sort of. It's it's about lunchtime now. I'd say. So you you could get there in a couple of hours. 
let's let's saddle up. Yeah. I'm just gonna fly ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll just unhitch the horses and just try to take the horse there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the three of you leave the village and the still very much in progress harvest and festival behind you, uh, heading towards the dwarven mine of Alehand's Folly and whatever dangers may lie within. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, We'll be back, as usual, in two weeks' time on Thursday, October the 15th, with the next chapter of this story. And we hope you'll all join us for that. In the meantime, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all of which we are at Pretend With Dice. If you're a Discord user, we have our own server on there, which you can get to by the link in our Twitter bio and on the contact page of our Podbean feed. Uh, So, yeah, come join us on there and hang out. Uh, Finally, you can also email us at pretendingwithdice at outlook.com. Uh, lastly, uh, no matter what podcast platform you use, we always appreciate ratings and reviews. So if you've enjoyed the podcast at all, go ahead and leave us a rating and review, and it all helps others to find the podcast. Uh, all right then, so for now, that's our show. Uh, we hope you all enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. <laughs>